Get up to Chad Pergram. He's live on Capitol Hill. He's got some breaking news about Ken Buck. Chad? That's right, John. Uh, Ken Buck, the Republican congressman from Colorado, has just announced here that he will resign from the House of Representatives at the end of next week. Now, we knew that he was going to uh, step down at the end of this Congress here. Uh, this is going to squeeze this margin for House Republicans more and more here. These will be the numbers when Ken Buck steps down at the end of next week. They will be down to 431 members. 218 Republicans to 213 Democrats. As I always say, it's about the math. Right now, Republicans can only lose two votes on their side and still pass a bill because a tie vote, uh, that goes down automatically by rule. This will still be a two-vote margin here for Ken Buck, and the Republicans, so Ken Buck is going to step aside at the end of next week, and that will increase the headaches for House Speaker Mike Johnson. Keep in mind that they have to fund the government again at the end of next week. There's another tranche of spending bills that they need to try to move through uh, the House and the Senate to keep the government open. That's about two-thirds of all federal spending, and they have to do it with a tighter margin yet with Ken Buck gone. John? Uh, Chad, um, just a reminder, as Jason Chaffetz is sitting here, he used to be the head of the Republican Party there in Colorado. Did he say specifically why he's leaving and the timing of this decision? Yeah, I, I just looked at his statement a second ago here, so this is just coming in uh, as we get it here. But, uh, you know, he had indicated that he was going to step down. Uh, he, mm -hmm. You know, he had expressed a lot of concern here about how things were going. Um, you know, he actually put forth a resolution not long ago. He was still engaged in legislation to try to invoke the 25th Amendment uh, to remove uh, the president because of what was said in the Robert Herr report about whether or not the president was fully with it. That hasn't gotten any consideration here. But uh, that demonstrates that Ken Buck was, was working on this right up to the end. He also was at odds with his party. You might remember that he was one of three Republicans who voted against the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas, mm -hmm. the Homeland Security Secretary here. Uh, you know, he, he's a conservative. He doesn't like what Mayorkas had done, but he thought that it was a bridge too far to impeach Mayorkas, only the second uh, cabinet secretary ever impeached. So he was at odds with parts of his party for quite a long time there, Sandra. Yeah, I mean, he was very vocal about that, just didn't think it was a good idea, didn't know why they were going down that road. What, what, what are the implications for November when you take a look at uh, the ratings for the House and the number of uh, seats that they think that they might be able to either gain or worry about losing? The Senate, Dem Senate Republicans are thinking that uh, they could probably do pretty well because Democrats are defending in 23, uh, Republicans are defending in 11, and a number of those are open seats and uh, quite competitive. So what are the implications in the overall for November? Well, well, it's certainly a lot tougher uh, for Democrats to hold on to the Senate because of the way the map has been drawn. It favors the Republicans right now. Uh, we're still trying to parcel out some of the maps in the House of Representatives, but I'll tell you, the House will be won or lost probably in California and probably mm -hmm. in New York State uh, because they have new maps there. You might remember that Republicans surprised a lot of people flipping five uh, House seats in New York. Uh, there were three there that they were they, they, they thought they might be able to hold on to. But that's going to be where the House is, is won. In the Senate here, that is an uphill battle because they have to defend Sherrod Brown in Ohio. He's a Democrat. He's won in the Senate in previous Democratic years. He won in, in 2006. He won in 2012 with uh, Barack Obama on the ballot. He won in 2018, which was a Democratic year in that midterm election. John Tester is the Democrat from Montana. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that, that he always sometimes figures out a way to win. He's a moderate. But look at other places where the presidential election is going to be in play, Wisconsin and Michigan. Yeah. And, of course, in New York, as you mentioned, um, you know, there was some seats that flipped toward the Republicans, but that third congressional district just flipped back when they uh, booted George Santos uh, from the body. All right, Chad, thanks very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.